so now um, it's over to the SRSG for her introductory remarks. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Olivia. And um, great to see everyone again. I don't see all of you, but I see some of you on the screen, and I, I know the rest of you are are with us. So I want to being here this evening to mark United Nations Day with us here at UNFASIP. You know, I think this is a perfect day not only to celebrate the UN and what the UN stands for, but it's also a perfect day to celebrate you and to pay tribute to you, our youth champions for environment and peace. You know, usually the United Nations would be using today uh, to get together the, the diplomatic community, many of our um, civil society partners and other stakeholders on the island uh, for a cocktail and for an informal conversation and for a speech from me. But of course, this is not any ordinary year. Uh, first of all, on the plus side of the equation, this year is the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. It's also the anniversary, 75th anniversary of our founding charter. Of course, the other new thing or different thing about this year is the COVID-19 pandemic. And that has certainly th turned things upside down across the world. It's created tremendous difficulties. It's lost lives and the economic, social and health well-being of people and nations across the globe has been seriously compromised. So as a result, we have a very different, a very unusual UN day. Uh, and even the work that we've been trying to do together has ended up becoming largely virtual as a result. But as much as we're suffering with the COVID pandemic and it is an extremely serious situation, we know and you as environmental peace builders know that there's another crisis of even potentially greater disruption and calamity that's looming over the planet. And that is the massive destruction of the natural world that we know and on which all of us depend. So you may have seen that in the lead up to the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, our Secretary General, uh, Secretary General Guterres, asked his peace missions and all of the UN presences around the world to engage people in the areas where they operate and to try to get people to begin a dialogue with the United Nations on how we can build a better future for all. So at UNFASIP, we've been reaching out to Cypriots across the island since last year, since the October 2019 commemoration of UN Day. And we've been doing that through our social media and through a number of other means. But I consider that our signature response to UN 75 has been to organize and launch this particular initiative. Our UNFASIP's environmental peace building program, which has at its very core, the work that you are doing, the relationship between you and the relationship that you have with us. So as a result of this environmental peace building program, as you know, the, one of the main outcomes so far has been the selection of all of you as our environmental peace builders. And I'm been actually very proud of the work that we've been able to do together and very proud of the work that you uh, together have been able to do amongst yourselves. I am a little bit sad about the fact that again, because of COVID, many of the exciting things that we were hoping to do with you didn't come to fruition. But nonetheless, you did get together, you did work together, you became very cohesive, even working online. And I am pleased that despite the difficulties, we did manage to get you together uh, in person, a number of you on several occasions. So one of the things that I'm very much looking forward to tonight is for you to tell us how you have found this program, um, what you see the potential is, and for you to highlight some of the initiatives that, initiatives that you have been working on. From what I can see, the positive results of what you've already done have been not only the several campaigns, the environmental awareness campaigns that you've put together, but also the friendship and the bonds that you've created uh, amongst each other. 
this is a first step as far as I'm concerned to building the necessary bridges in Cyprus that might bring us to a brighter future. We all know that in Cyprus, it's not easy to build bridges. There are too many painful memories. There's a very difficult history on this island. And above all, it takes courage for people on this island to decide to reach across the divide. And definitely it takes courage to act. And that's what you have been doing. You have been acting and you have become serious actors on this island. As the head of the two UN missions here on the island, I want to thank you very sincerely for having placed your trust in us. I want to thank you for having decided to apply for this initiative and for having stuck with it all of these weeks, even though it's been so much more difficult to do this than we had originally anticipated. I want to thank you for your sincere efforts, for your clear love of this island, for your bright ideas on greening Cyprus, and for your determination to give cooperation across the green line a chance. So my dear champions, even though you're officially graduating from our program this evening, I hope that this won't be the last time that we will be together. I really hope it's not going to be the last time that I will engage with you and that my colleagues will be engaging with you. We hope to continue to have a relationship with this very dynamic group of people that you are. Um, I hope that we'll find a, a means of staying not only in touch, but of supporting you as you go forward. And I believe that some of this um, conversation that we need to have with you has already begun, because I would love to have your own ideas on what that might look like and how we might continue uh, to work together. I'm also hoping that next year we can launch perhaps a second wave, if you will, not of COVID, but a second wave of youth champions for the environment and peace of UNFACIP. And so if you have friends of yours or people that you, you, you know in your neighborhood uh, through your studies who might be in, interested and inspired by such a program, do let them know that we would like to, to expand it. And that while we might have to find a little bit more support for this, we are determined to try to make that work. So I do want to hear your feedback, both on what the future of this program should look like, perhaps a second group of, of young uh, environmental peace builders, but also how we can stay in touch with you. Um, I want to um, also thank the Stelius Foundation and I hope we were hoping that they would be with us uh, tonight. They were not able to be with us. Uh, but Sir Stelios himself, the head of the Stelios Foundation, was very keen on supporting this initiative and on inspiring and supporting young people like you to be engaged. As you know, he has put uh, not only a lot of his faith, but a lot of his own money into bringing people together across the divide over the last few years. And he is, is very excited to see what, what you will do next and what you might, what more you might do uh, also with, with the UN in, in the future. So I also want to address a few words to those who will eventually be tuning into this because we do hope that um, we will put part of today's uh, program online. And to those people, I, what I would hope that they would do is to discover who you are, you young champions, to get a bit of insight into what motivates you, and also to take pride as other Cypriots in the energy and the commitment that all of you have shown, not only to peace building and reaching out to each other, but also to try and make a better Cyprus starting through the environmental challenges that you're quite ready to take on. I just want to end by um, mentioning a, an event that I was uh, a part of a few weeks ago with the High Commissioner of India here um, in Cyprus. We uh, planted a tree together in the buffer zone, and this was 
for the commemoration of the 150th anniversary of the birth of a very important peace advocate that we all know, Mahatma Gandhi. I wanted to finish by quoting from Mahatma Gandhi as an inspiration to you and as, as in, an inspiration to other young people who might join you in the future. Mahatma Gandhi said a lot of wise things and two of the things that, that, that he said uh, really resonate with me tonight. One of them, and I direct that to you and I also direct that to all of us, one of them is be the change that you wish to see in the world. And the other one is that the future depends on what you do today. So with that, my thanks again. And I really look forward to hearing from all of you and also from some of our other special guests in this graduation ceremony and celebration of the United Nations. Thank you. Many thanks for this very inspiring and encouraging words. Um, I think that, uh, you know, without much ado, we should have a look at these campaigns that two, there are, no, there are at least two campaigns that will be presented today. Um, and uh, I think the first presenters will be, if I uh, understand correctly, will be uh, Orestes and Vishtan, uh, the waste uh, campaign. So maybe, uh, are you ready to present Vishtan or Orestes? Hi. Hi. Um, okay, so I join, rejoined by downloading the Microsoft Teams. So, Marina, can you allow me to share my screen again, please? So, Vishal, that was a request uh, for Marina to allow to share your screen, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Marina, are you there? Also, I just found out that you can't have the gallery view in the browser. You just have to download the Microsoft Teams to have this gallery view option. Yeah. So whose screen are we seeing right now? I think Marina's. Yeah. Marina's screen. Okay. So I think Marina's showing it from there. Yeah. On their side. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, I will mute myself now and hand over to you. Yeah. So I will start uh, presenting. Maybe we can put it full screen first and then I'll start. Yeah. Okay, so me and Vijay will be presenting the food waste uh, campaign prepared by a group. And um, so we focused on food waste, which is, uh, we also researched about it in Cyprus. It is a problem. And uh, here we see uh, an apple, which is, looks, very much uh, yeah imperfect but actually it's very delicious so we came up with a campaign name uh, deliciously imperfect and we want to encourage people uh, we want to tackle food waste in cyprus by encouraging people of from stopping um, we should stop judging food by its cover so if marina yeah thank you so first of all, yeah, the first question that comes in your mind is, is there actually a food waste problem uh, to begin with? And the answer is yes, and the, the numbers speak for themselves. And uh, this is globally to show the magnitude. Uh, actually, 1.3 billion tons gets wasted uh, every year. And actually 45% of that waste is uh, fruit and vegetable, according to the Food uh, Agriculture Organization. 
uh, there's a lot of resources that go to waste because of the practices we have. And actually 25% of the water used uh, for agriculture just goes to waste from this mismanagement. Um, a big problem that we have now is climate change. And uh, this also doesn't help. Uh, we stuck up food in landfills and as they get stuck up, um, there's no air coming in and there's anaerobic digestion going on the which releases uh, methane, which is a, a big contributor to the greenhouse gases that causes climate change. Um, money, of course, is an issue. Uh, imagine, I think I saw a video uh, <laughs> of, a, of a campaign we, we got inspired from. There's a woman going down the road. She has two bags of fruits and vegetables. And, and along the way, one, one gets dropped and she doesn't care. So that's actually a, a good visualization of what we're actually doing and how much money we're losing from this. The resources that go into it, uh, the energy to transport it. Uh, so yeah, it's something that we, we have to do something about. And if we go to, can go to the next slide. Uh, I want to show you uh, specifically for Cyprus. Uh, from the research we have done, we see that at least for the south, uh, some data we found uh, is also very negative. We have the highest, uh, one of the highest household waste production per capita in Europe. Uh, actually, 636 kilo per capita uh, was recorded in 2017. Uh, we also wanted to show here uh, that there is a gap in the north. We don't know that much and we need to find out uh, what how big the problem is. And um, we talked about environmental problems, economic problems, but it's also a big social problem if we think about it. And the question is, why do we waste so much food if there's so many people still on the planet, two billion people uh, that live in poverty. So we have to do something about this. And that's why we wanted to go on with this campaign. And uh, next slide. And who is we? We are a bicommunal group of young environmental activists that really want to take action together and uh, find solutions. And our aim is to tackle food waste and by way of normalizing the purchase of odd looking fruit and vegetables like the one we saw in the beginning in supermarkets and preventing quality food from going to waste. So we have researched uh, in the south and in the north. We found that some places uh, do sell these products that are of second class in for cheaper price, uh, but a lot more work has to be done and we want to uh, encourage young people to, to, to have this practice of buying uh, this kind of vegetables and uh, contributing, contributing to the waste problem. So I'll handling uh, now to I'll hand it over to Vich to talk Thank about the solutions we found. Thanks. Um, next slide, please. So food waste problem contains a lot of issues in itself and there are many factors contributing to food loss and wasting. I believe they have different definitions. Um, starting from the farms, in shops, at homes and along this whole supply chain that we don't actually know much about. And among many factors, like Oreste said, one of them is the high quality standards. Um, the retail sector and us consumers have developed over the years. And it's like we have this high visual standard on what a good fruit and vegetable should look like. And this meant tossing, tossing out the fruit and vegetables that didn't fit in this standard. And as you can see from this photo taken from, the, from a supermarket in the north side, they were all into the standards and there were no ugly ones that I could find. So 
after the death study, uh, we've done uh, an on-site study and we interviewed some supermarkets and suppliers that we could find. And from, this, from these interviews, we found out that there is an actual problem where in the north side, especially, the fruits and vegetables that are not visually good looking doesn't get sold and they are returned back to the supplier at the end of the day. And one of the suppliers said there's like 30 kilograms of cucumbers they, they dump every day. And this is approximate. And just the cucumbers. And in the south side, um, the situation is a bit better because they have started selling it at a cheaper price in some supermarkets. So our solution is we want to save the ugly looking fruits and vegetables by doing a community-based social marketing. This is the fancy term that we got from the EPA. I hope we, this is what we're doing. Next slide, please. We're targeting university students um, because we we believe that they need the cheaper price um, fruits and vegetables. They can make use of that. And also, um, younger generation is much more easier to change the behavior, behavior of the younger generation. There are, of course, some barriers that we can face, which is the limited space in the supermarkets to showcase the ugly looking fruits and vegetables on, a, on a cheaper prices and also our willingness of the supermarkets to join this campaign. And benefits of this campaign would be the cost for the students. They will buy their fruits and vegetables on a cheaper price. Also, I didn't mention here, but health-wise, I believe it will be beneficial for them. And for the supermarkets, it will mean um, selling more and wasting less and giving less to the supplier. Next time. We will do our campaign um, due to the limitations of the pandemic on social media mainly. Um, we have researched that from a research based in 2017, and there are really high number of Facebook users in ROC which um, seeing from my grandmother, this is true for the north side too. And the second comes Instagram. We are planning to use the university's um, social media accounts to um, reach a broader audience and students. We will put our posters on the university notice boards and at the uh, pilot study supermarkets and create visual stimulation. We, our hashtags are saying no to food waste and deliciously imperfect as our campaigning. Next slide, please. Yes, we can skip that. And uh, we have looked at the example campaigns, one of which was from France, the Inglorious Fruits and Vegetables, which was using the humorous approach and personifying the fruits and vegetables, uh, which was a success actually. So we're we're hoping that it will be the same case here in Cyprus. Next slide, please. Another example was imperfect food. I think this is from America, which also aimed the same things. Um, the actual fruits and vegetables sold on a cheaper prices at supermarkets. Next slide, please. So we have created these posters um, with our group with hand modeling from Dennis and Orestes. And they both actually um, looking, they managed to find that looking fruits and vegetables as well. And uh, we have created them in three languages. Orestes, do you want to say some stuff here? Yes, so yes. we uh, we had to collect some pictures. We thought maybe we can get them from the internet, but then 
kind of like a, a funny story. I was going towards Nicosia and then I was going because I'm from Paphos and I drove through uh, from Aphrodite's rock and I thought uh, maybe we can link it with uh, the love factor that that place had. And I previously bought some ugly ones to take pictures. So you see me there uh, posing the, the, the ugly vegetables. And then uh, Denise also took some really nice pictures, especially the one with the carrot that they also show uh, the love factor uh, to, to be the front uh, of our posters. And um, yeah, we, we tried to come up with catchy, uh, catchy names and sentences to, to get the attention of, of the youth. One uh, of them is, yeah. Yeah, tell us. Don't judge a veggie by its cover. Yeah, and if we go lower. Next slide, please. Don't and the go other break one my is heart. from the song, Don't Go Breaking My Heart. And we have post posters in all three languages as well that we can put on to show that it's a bi-communal project. So, so yeah, we could use them uh, online and also maybe actually print them and put them in universities or supermarkets. And next slide, please. And just to summarize and then end with the next steps. Um, what we wanted to do with our campaign, with our group, was to tackle the food waste, which through our research we found out it is a problem in Cyprus. Uh, specifically, we wanted to tackle fruits and vegetables and the, the ugly looking ones that uh, get thrown away, uh, despite the fact that they're equally delicious and nutritious. And we wanted to do, we want to do that by changing the perception of young people and change their behavior to actually buy this food and thus contributing to the, to the tackling food waste. And that's for university students and, and specifically at supermarkets. And as we said, yeah, we want to do that uh, for now with posters and uh, putting a lot of uh, material on social media in targeted groups uh, uh, that might reach young people. And Vij will tell us uh, something about the next steps, which is the next slide. <laughs> so this um, campaign has a great potential to extend to future uh, a lot of activities, other activities. Um, if the COVID permits, we can have standard universities uh, with like um, showcasing the ugly fruits and vegetables and also making some smoothies out of them to show them that like really the look doesn't matter, it's only a matter of taste. Uh, we can have international challenges uh, through social media by uh, asking people to buy uh, ugly fruit and vegetable and take a picture of it uh, with a landmark of their countries or with the sky. And we can also um, extend it to a supplier chain, which is in some supermarkets we learned that they actually don't get it at all and refuse it from the beginning. So. This is something that needs to be tackled as well. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that was very impressive. I mean, the research you've done is amazing. Uh, very, very thorough and very ambitious. There plans to scale up. And I guess my reaction was when I saw it is that those veg were not ugly. I mean, that was the cutest cucumber I ever saw. It was, <laughs> and the carrot. I loved it. So uh, it's it's uh, interesting. I mean, it's a good, good, uh, very, very good approach there. Trying to question what is beautiful and what is ugly. 
Um, so uh, I guess a lot, there are many comments on this, but just to proceed with the programs, maybe I ask everybody to hold on to their comments until we also see the second presentation. So uh, the second one is bike communal. And I think, uh, is it, um, um, who is it? Is it Joseph who will present that? And Murto? <laughs> Hi, uh, uh, Kemal as well, I think. And Kemal, are you there, Kemal? If he has internet. Okay. Yes, great. Hi, Kemal. Yes. Hello. Fantastic. Okay, please. The floor is yours. Remember on the couch. Uh, Mishto, I think uh, you you have access, correct, to to show. No, I'm not sure. You you are uh, you are as Joseph. Okay. Yeah, let's get that. <laughs> okay. Yes. Just a second. Let me give. Um, okay. I made uh, Joseph a presenter. Okay. Yeah. Um, try it now and let me know if it works. Uh, And uh, I made Kemal a presenter as well. Uh, so can you see the screen now? Yes. Uh, we, okay, cool. Yes, exactly. We can, yes. Okay. Uh, I can start and maybe Kemal can chime in. Um, so yeah, we're the bicommunal uh, group. We're aiming to promote cycling um, in car-free city, all, the old town of Nicosia. And we're combining the peace element of a bicommunal um, initiative with the environmental uh, element of cycling instead of using our own cars. Uh, so our elevator pitch. Uh, so the high usage of cars is a massive ecological and health problem, uh, both in the north and the south of Cyprus. It is the number one um, uh, ris uh, emitter of uh, greenhouse gases in Cyprus, around 50% of our emissions. And this is a problem that can only be solved with cooperation uh, between the, the communities as uh, our transport infrastructure is connected uh, in the end. So we suggest as a solution to start this effort to have a monthly car free day in the old town of Nicosia. The old town is specifically uh, designed to promote cycling, it has small streets, it has uh, a lot of uh, protection from cars, uh, it's flat, so it, it's very easy to use your bike to move around. So yes, the campaign will be both in the north and south, uh, in the, within the walls, in Nicosia within the walls. And uh, we want all the roads eventually to be uh, car free, but we will start uh, by promoting this event as uh, once uh, a month, every first Sunday, for example, of each month. Why we do this? Uh, first of all, we want to reduce greenhouse uh, gas emissions. Cyprus is uh, a very heavy emitter of greenhouse gas emissions when it comes to transport. And more than 50% of our total emissions today come from uh, transport. Everyone, everyone has their own car. And, and the share of cycling, public transport, walking uh, is uh, minute. So uh, to tackle this issue, we want to promote cycling as a solution. Um, we believe that there, 
cannot be a future without coordinated action in environmental problems. When it comes to uh, traffic and transportation, obviously the roads connect. Uh, this was an issue for, the, uh, Nicos for Nicosia for many years, a discussion of a ring road, for example, which um, historically uh, exists around the city. When you divide the city, you divide the traffic and you have to divert it somewhere. So traffic is a very easy example of seeing how this division um, uh, interferes with environmental issues as well. Yeah, uh, as I said before, uh, the percentage of car usage in in, in CIA and in Cyprus is extremely high, uh, one of the highest across Europe. And uh, based on analysis from transport engineers of the Nicosia municipality, it is expected with, that with the current rates of growth of car usage in Nicosia, we expect to have gridlock during peak hours in 2023. That means that when you're driving your car from, uh, I don't know, from uh, the outskirts of Nicosia towards the city center in 2023 at uh, eight o'clock in the morning, you will be basically uh, not moving for, let's say, an hour. And you will be in your car and nothing will be moving around you. And clearly, building more roads is not a sustainable solution and it doesn't work. Uh, looking into the science of transport engineering, one of the first rules you learn is uh, roads bring traffic. The more roads you make, the more traffic you create. So, uh, who, who we are? We, you know, we are the Unfisit Youth Champions, and uh, we want to tackle both environmental and peace. Um, crisis that we face in, in this island. And we understand how these are interconnected, especially in the topic that we have chosen. chosen. And uh, this struggle uh, affects uh, all communities across the island. And we believe that starting from the old town of Nicosia will resonate to other cities across Cyprus uh, if successful. <laughs> so that's the middle. So I, I give the floor to Kemal. Yes. Uh Take your mic Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can someone please share the presentation again? Because. Yeah, we will share it. Uh, I can't see. Oh, yeah. So, uh, who is our uh, audience in our campaign? We try to aim to attract the youth between the 18 and 30 years old uh, who are visiting the wallet city on Sundays. And we decided to focus on Sundays because it's the weekend and in the wallet city of Nicosia, there are so many government institutions. And if we try to aim this campaign between the working days, we may prevent the flow of traffic and people may get angry. That's why. We try to make it on Sundays when the, everyone is free can, and can also join the, such activities. That's why we decided to focus on particularly Sundays. And regarding our stakeholders, uh, we will need to collaborate with many different parties like the municipalities of Nicosia from the both side. And we will also try to collaborate with the bike mayor of Nicosia and the Ministry of Transport and Cyprus Youth Council as well. And can you please move to the next slide? Uh, regarding the outcomes of the company, campaign, uh, we will try to normalize the cycling as a routine activity on Nicosia. And we hope that our campaign will also Create a stronger bonds in terms of bi communality in the Nicosia. And lastly, we will try to show that it is possible to collaborate and do something good for the environment. And the next one, please.
regarding the channels that we will use, like the previous group, we will also try to use online channels like Facebook and Instagram to reach people. And we will also create the posters and we will try to post it some places like where people use the roads very frequently so you can see them. Regarding the environment, we don't want to print out so many posters, so we will use very few posters and maybe we are also planning to use recycled materials in our posters. So we will try to minimize the environmental impact of our posters as well. And the last one I think. Yes, and we will also use the video, which we believe that it's the most easy way of communicating with people. And also by video, we can share the more message within a very short period of time. In our video, we try to keep it very short. We didn't want to make it very long because people may lose interest after a certain period of time. And we also use some photos and tests text as you will see in our posters. And regarding this one, yes, here is our posters. Uh, before this, creating the last version of our posters, we work on different versions. And then we try to discuss between ourselves how we can make it the best that we can do. And can we move to the posters, please? Yes, thank you. We try to use bright colors in our poster just to attract the people's interest. And we also try to use the colors of nature like green and blue. And align with the goals and objectives of our campaign, we try to put the most important parts to our poster. We didn't want to fill it with many writings and pictures. We try to align the bicycle with the shape of the Nicosia, or Nicosia. So we try to combine them in a way that, that is appealing. We will also use some hashtags in our campaigns, as you can see from the posters. And we try to start our campaign beginning from the 6th of December on Sunday, and we will try to do it every Sunday afterwards. Thank you so much. And we can also show the video maybe. Yeah. Would you like to see the video as well? 30 seconds. Or um, David will show it later. Yes, we would love to show it. Okay, do you want me to share the video? Okay. Do you have a final version? This is pre-final, David. No, it's, it's, this is the, the last version, yes. Okay. Oops. Tell us if you can hear can, the sound. Can you see it? Yes. We hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that was really fantastic. I mean, what a powerful action if both sides of Nicosia were to do this simultaneously once a month. I think it's a very, very impressive project and I really hope that it goes well. <laughs> and very nice video as well. And beautiful posters with the wall. I thought it was very creative with the, with the wall city of Nicosia within the tire of the bicycle. So um, I think um, we, uh, 
At this time, I would really like to hear something from David and Talia because they have they really deserve a special mention in this program because they have actually been here with us throughout and uh, mentoring the youth champions. So they have been sort of very closely in touch with you as you have developed the campaigns. So uh, David and Talia, very big thank you from Asap de Would you would you like to say something about your experience of working with these these incredible young people? Well, from my side, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, the youth themselves have such energy and so many great ideas and kind of pulling everything together uh, with their concepts and um, the, the campaign itself, the ideas. I mean, I think part of the uh, part of the challenge was at the beginning is that they had so many different ideas. So there were so many things they wanted to change and uh, problems they wanted to tackle that actually, you know, we had to kind of uh, tie them down to one or two because because of, in the interest of time and, and just to try and kind of really focus on the ones that were manageable in terms of, uh, you know, trying to get something started as a pilot or, or an idea. And I think both ideas presented today are... Uh, very scalable, very doable, and I really am hoping that uh, we'll be able to see something even after this program's finished, and I hope they have the kind of energy and the impetus to, to continue them, because I think, you know, this is the beginning. It's a kind of blueprint of what could be, and I think it would be a fantastic, fantastic thing if they could uh, proceed with it. So I look forward to hearing more from them in the future. It's been a real pleasure working with you guys. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to to do that. Um, and also from my end, um, I think despite the difficulties we had because of COVID, I do believe that everybody worked very hard and I'm really, really proud of working with you guys. Um, I hope it was as much fun for you guys as it was for us. And I think everything else Sally has said, so well done, and I do really look forward to taking these campaigns to the next level as we discussed between us. And um, yeah, thanks very much, guys. It was a pleasure working with you. Thank you, David. I just got a message here from uh, Elizabeth. She wrote that both presentations were fantastic. I'm so proud, she wrote. <laughs> so that's for you. Uh, OK, so. Um, we actually have with us also two members of the Technical Committee on the Environment, the Bicommunal Technical Committee on the Environment. Uh, you have met them, I think, previously at the session. Most of you have met them at least online. And um, I would like to invite them at this point to maybe say a couple of remarks each. It's, um, it's Gaston from the South. Uh, Gaston, I'm sorry, I can't remember. I don't know how to pronounce his surname, but Maybe you can introduce yourself. He's a sort of a very prominent member of the technical committee from the Greek Cypriot side. Okay. Uh, my surname is Neokleus. Neokleus. No, it's not so easy in English or in Turkish, so I, I avoid. I use, I'm using my first name, which is easy going, Gaston. Uh, it's a French name, though I'm Greek Cypriot, but I feel purely Cypriot. I'm very proud of what initiatives like these are coming to my attention. I'm very happy for uh, and uh, I congratulate uh, the youth champions for uh, what you have done and coming together and uh, establishing friendships and uh, at the same time working for a good cause for, uh, I mean specifically for the environment. Uh, and uh, opening uh, routes for a better future for our uh, common homeland. Um, <clears throat> I can say that both projects that you presented were very interesting. I only wonder th those fruits that or vegetables that are not looking proper, uh, we can be sure that they are healthy. I mean, this is an aspect maybe that sh should be uh, examined to be sure that is just the image that is not proper. So yes, we buy and we use, or we cook them if it is not proper to eat them as they are. 
so maybe some more uh, promotional uh, work should be done there to convince the people to buy them. Uh, as regards the cycling project, for sure, uh, it's uh, something that can help our daily life. Uh, the, the Sunday, free Sunday every month is nice, but maybe we should aim also parallelly at uh, uh, free uh, transportation to the schools. So by uh, encouraging all students or pupils to use a bike, bicycle and protect them to use, to use their bicycle by limiting the speed limit of the streets that are from neighborhoods to the schools. And uh, I mean, we can do more, but it's very encouraging the, the suggestion and the idea of using the bicycle because uh, it can uh, help the cities and uh, free, uh, make the air more, uh, uh, okay for us to breathe and more healthy society and less uh, problems of the planet in general if we can manage to uh, encourage everywhere this to happen to take place um, and uh, more uh, of course our committees our technical environmental uh, committees that I was I am working in for this last few years uh, are working to bring people together to share uh, experiences amongst the experts on several uh, environmental issues so we can share this experience and promote it and have a better environment and better societies a unified society finally. And uh, if I can uh, add to this, the, on the bicycle project, I can say that our uh, technical environmental committee, uh, which is by communal and we worked a lot, as I told you, together, is promoting a project for the last few years. And I hope finally it will be promoted and uh, uh, take uh, materialize not only plans but practical uh, enforcement of that project is a project in Pedieos River, which is a, a, can unite the north and south parts of Nicosia through the buffer uh, zone with a cycling and pedestrian route. And we have uh, studied this and we are uh, on the process of, of promoting it with the help of uh, the United Nations and European Union and I hope uh, finally we will proceed and uh, after the coronavirus is end is finished we can freely move and uh, unite the people of Nicosia for, uh, at the beginning and then of the whole island uh, as soon as possible. Thank uh, you so much, thank Gaston. You much. Thank you. Thank you, those very, very nice words. Um, let's also hear from the Turkish uh, Cypriot representative today. Yonter, are you there? Um, are you there, Yonter, with us? Maybe he's not, but I think you spoke so well, Gaston. I think you spoke for the entire committee. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we also have with us um, representatives of the Cyprus Environmental Stakeholders Board, the CSF, who we at Amphisip are also very happy to partner with. Uh, we have Costas and Martin, who um, would also, I think, like to say something at this point. Um, who, should, who, who would like to start? Martin, I can see you 
on the screen. Would you like to say something? Good evening, everybody. Uh, we felt the need for a bicommunal, environmentally orientated uh, organization, which wasn't registered either in the north or in the south. And so through the kind offices of Grow Civic, uh, an EU uh, a funding operation for small grants, we managed to get registered in Brussels. This was only a short time ago. Uh, COVID has been a real, real problem for us. Uh, we have four Turkish Cypriot N uh, NGO representatives, four Greek Cypriot NGO representatives, and the Belgian as founder members so far. Uh, we, no, not we, I am uh, delighted to see so many young people involved. I'm a little bit unhappy that the biking is only between 18 and 30. I'm 32 and so um, it seems as if I'm excluded. Uh, <clears throat> but it's, it is, the, the, the future of the island is in your hands, young people. And then the environment is a great way to, to bring together both communities. Um, the purpose for CESF, I'll leave to cost us. So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, is Mr. Orono, is Costas there? Thank you, Martin. Costas, are you thank with you. us? He wrote to me earlier that he had issues with his microphone. Uh, Yes, uh, I think Martin, he's still Martin. having issues with the microphone, so um, he's um, he's kindly asking Martin to uh, sort of to to do the <laughs> entire speaking. <laughs> right, um, I'll continue in that case. From my point of view, the purpose of the uh, uh, CESF is picking up where uh, UNDP left off. Uh, there was a very similar program which ended in 2007. It's 2020 at the moment, and we've decided to revitalize that uh, opportunity of bringing people from both sides together, uh, particularly to discuss environmental issues, which we share. Mm -hmm. it's, it's that simple. What happens in my backyard today is going to affect your backyard tomorrow. And uh, we want the CESF to be a center of communication for information, for funding sources, for uh, young people and some older ones <clears throat> to, uh, to get together uh, and simply see what we can do to improve the situation uh, on our island uh, from an environmental point of view. Thank you so much, Martin. So well, I guess both the Technical Committee and the CSF are points of contacts that you should keep the youth champions because they are, will be important you know, partners in your projects going forward. Very uh, so uh, we also have uh, Nick Jarod with us. Um, you know Nick because he has been involved in this program. He held one presentation um, a while ago now on the buffer zone and also uh, he was involved in the selection of you. So he's really been quite closely involved with this program. So I would very much like to ask Nick to to give some remarks as well. Yes, hi everyone, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, so I, so it's great to be here now at the, after having been with you at the start, at the culmination of this amazing initiative and I love the way that all the things I love are coming together tonight. The CSF was something I worked on, the original CSF in 2007. Uh, we created that because at the time there were no technical committees and we felt it was important to have experts in environment to actually talk to each other. Um, we made a decision, a conscious one, to wind it down in 2008 because we didn't want to interfere with the nascent technical committees. But I'm so glad now, I think this is the right time that not only has it been revived, but it, it's stronger than ever. It's in much better hands than when I was involved. And it's actually been registered, which is something we never managed. Uh, so I'm, I'm so excited about that. But coming back to the youth champions, I, I think it's, 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 it's fantastic what you've been able to do. You've, you've provided a, exactly what we expected in a way. You've provided a fresh spin on all this. 
Um, you ignored all our advice, which is exactly what you should have done because you've gone beyond what we were trying to do, which was appropriate maybe 20, 15, 20 years ago, and you've adapted to the current situation with flashy, uh, sharp initiatives. And this is, I think, exactly uh, what we expected. Aside from praising you, I could do that all night. Um, I would also, I will offer you and send you maybe a couple of opportunities through Olivia and through Marina after this event to uh, maybe give you uh, opportunities to continue this work, especially within the framework of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, of the UN. Um, I, I was trying to decide which hat to wear today to talk to you, and I decided I'm gonna wear the hat of the network manager of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which uh, is dedicated to promoting the Sustainable Development Goals. There are many uh, activities which you would be able to take part in, there's a workshop coming up on 7th of November, uh, training for uh, essentially communicating the sustainable development goals within your communities and together. Um, and also, um, just today I learned that the Lo uh, Local Pathways Fellowships program has opened, which is again for young people who are interested in sustainable development in the environment. Um, it's a 10 month program. Uh, that is supported by SDSN and again can help get you engaged with the worldwide community. Um, so all these are, are exciting opportunities. I'm sure you will find lots of other opportunities of your own. And I just want to, in, in a way, what, what this whole initiative has reminded me is that environment really is the key. Even today when we may be tempted to be depressed about the what's happening with the Cyprus problem, we should remember that the first ever large scale confidence building measure after the conflict in 74 was the reconnection of the Nicosia sewage system by uh, somebody who at the time was a young champion, uh, Mustafa Akinji, and uh, of course, Lelos Demetriadis, who wasn't so young even at the time. But that was it. The environment was the most obvious way for people to get started, and it will be. It will continue to do so, and it will continue to be that last channel of communication that exists, no matter how bad the Cyprus problem gets. Don't forget that, because it's in your hands now. Uh, and I think I've overstepped my time, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Those were very strong and inspiring words, I think, for everyone. And, and uh, please send through these opportunities. Uh, I, Think that would be amazing for this group actually to continue to benefit from the contacts that they have established with you all during this program and um, so now actually we're at the um the uh, certificate handout time of the agenda so it's time for marina i think to take over and she will um she will basically virtually give you the certificates and ask each of you to say a few words over to marina Thank you, Olivia, and thank you everyone for sticking with us despite our technical difficulties. Um, just, just oh, um, turn, turn that off and I'll turn this on. All right. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Still, uh, still vibrating. Um, yeah. All right. We yeah, are the volume of the other device. Um, yeah. Okay. So let me take this opportunity to thank everyone. Thank. Uh, everyone who has stuck with us throughout this process. I want to specifically thank uh, Martin and, and Gostas for um, being with us tonight and also Nicolas Jarod, who was, as he said, the first one to launch uh, CSF, the Cyprus Environmental Stakeholder Forum. I also want to thank uh, Gaston from the Technical Committee for being here with us and sharing his thoughts. Um, this, uh, you will be receiving your certificates physically uh, in the mail or we'll arrange that they actually do reach you um, uh, physically at some point. But for the time being, I wanted to 
show you <laughs> the, um, the certificate. And I'm gonna call on each and every one of you to just say a few words. What do you think about the program? Um, you know, if you have any feelings about it, um, just very short and sweet before we close. Um, so I would like to call on Andreas first. Andreas, are you there with okay. us? Okay, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. A few words for the program. Well, when I saw the program, I was like, uh, when the one foot outside of the youth, um, you know, networking and projects, but I thought that the intersection that is chosen for the program, the intersection that is between environment and peace and, uh, and youth, is, uh, is the right analytical framework to, to see and try to make uh, a little bit of change in the island. And uh, mostly uh, this program helped me to keep motivated. We live in dark times. We live in times where nationalism is on the, on the rise again. And I'm just glad that I met everyone here. It's good to see people that you share the same dream. I want to thank everyone from UNFISIP and all the people that gave lectures and uh, Thalia and David. And yeah, let's see each other again. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Denise. Good evening, good evening, everyone. So basically, I have the same excitement with the same day I started this program. And but today we saw that we have great ideas to overcome this environmental and peace problems in the island. And I believe that we will achieve this by education and collaboration between communities. And this is only a new beginning. So I hope to see everyone again with the next steps that we will achieve something greater than this. Thank you so much who made this initiative possible. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Denise Moon. So, Angelos. Hello, everyone. So I just wanted to start with thank, saying thank you to UNPC for organizing this and giving us the opportunity to come together and meet so many people and hear so many interesting presentations that gave us knowledge for, for life, basically. And I think the most important thing we learned from this is that we can do things together and especially in these times that uh, politically we're not doing very well, but uh, in a social aspect, no matter what happens politically with Cyprus, with the Cyprus problem, it's important that the two communities stay together. Thank you, Angelos. And I have to say, being with you, with your group, was so motivating for us. Um, thank you. Uh, Do Hi. Um, well, firstly, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be a part of the program. Um, at the, the first meeting we had, because I don't come from an environmental background, I did feel like fish out of water. Um, but over the course of this, I've learned a lot about the country that I live in and about the environment. And I'm so happy that I got to take part in this. I think specifically the program came about in quite a critical time, given the given what's happening in Cyprus, the last election and stuff, it is a time where it's quite easy to lose hope in the country. But I think being together and seeing all of you and the work that we put together, it really helps me preserve that hope I have for the future. Thank you very much. Um, Haris is not uh, here with us tonight. He's in the Netherlands, but we'll make sure his certificate gets to him. Um, Erdim. I think Erdim is. Hello. Yes. I, I think you can hear me. Yeah, um, I would like to first say thank you for the opportunity. This was really stimulating. We've learned so much about our island and get to know each other. So thank you very much. And 
I hope we can uh, continue this, mm, take this further. Thank you. Thank you very much, Erdim. It was really a pleasure getting to know you. Uh, Emily. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Um, yes. So I, I just wanted to thank everyone for um, completely, truthfully changing my attitude on the use of Cypress. Because it's one, as Dogu said, it's very easy to lose hope in, a, in times of somewhat darkness because we started at a very difficult period. So I am proud to say that I have been given a great opportunity to restore uh, my faith in this period youth. And you are all responsible for that. Um, and as well as the staff of UNCITIC that made this uh, campaign possible. So I just want to express my gratitude to everyone and wish that this is not the last time we are getting together. Definitely not. I think when COVID is, open, is over, hopefully by the summer, or if not earlier, then we'll all definitely make sure we meet together. Uh, Ergun, Ergun Bey. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I'm glad that um, I had the chance to meet with people um, that care about the environment and peace. Um, although I couldn't be very active in the last um, month uh, because I lost a few family members um, and then um, I was helping for the campaigns um, for the left-wing candidate Mustafa Akinji. Um Although we lost the elections, um, seeing people here um, still gives me hope that one day um, we will still have people that will fight for the unification of Cyprus. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ergin. Very important for us. Um, Evgenia. Hello, everyone, and happy UN Day for tomorrow. So in the context of the UN Day, 75 years ago, the UN Charter aspired to uh, save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. I think today uh, we can interpret the uh, word war in many different ways and definitely environmental destruction is a war we need to fight. And therefore I would like to thank the UN for not only having uh, this common vision of environmental protection in Cyprus, but most importantly for bringing us the closer together, I would say at a time of social distancing, um, the unfeasible sessions were honestly um, my <laughs> happiest time during quarantine while I was also revising for exams. So I'm very thankful to you and to all the unfeasible youth champions and I really hope we stay in touch. Thank you, Evgenia. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Fatosh. I think I saw Fatosh earlier, but maybe maybe she's out. Yeah. Um, Francesca cannot be with us tonight either. Um, and I'm not sure if Hatije managed to log in. I think she couldn't. Um, so Joseph. <laughs> ah. Hi everyone. Yeah, I'll be quite short because I think there are many people after me. So thanks everyone uh, for working together and for providing them as this opportunity. It's been amazing to be among all these uh, diverse people and skillful and motivated. And that gives me hope to work even more on these two topics. So thanks again. And I wish to have a follow up with everybody. We do as well. Thank you very much, Joseph. Uh, Fatosh is trying to get back in, so hopefully we'll have her soon. Kemal. Again, uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for organizing this initiative and making this possible for us. And I hope that in the future we will collaborate more frequently and we will also have more physical meetings for doing something good for the environment. It was a really good, 
great pleasure for me for working with you all and I learned so many things during this program. And yes, uh, I hope to see you all again very soon physically. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Kemal. Polymnia. Did we lose Polymnia on the way? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't uh, open my microphone. We can hear you, Polymnia. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> but now you're muted. <laughs> now you're on. Mm. Okay, thank you, um, Unfisip, for making this program a reality and giving us the opportunity to meet, to learn, to learn, and to work together. And this, for me, is what hope is working together in a common project and for a project that aims to change a bit cyprus for better thank you so much thank you everyone and i i will definitely see everyone soon in person i hope so <laughs> um Thank you very much, Polimnia. These are very nice words. Thank you. Merve. Um, did you say Merve? Yes. Uh, hi. That's you. Hi, yes. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like 